ready to dive into the secrets of perfect backstroke? Join me as we tackle common mistakes and transform your backstroke with simple yet powerful drills. Whether you're a beginner or looking to refine your technique, say goodbye to common errors and hello to powerful, efficient stroke. Hey, I'm Dan, all-American swimmer and owner of New York City-based swim school. Let me save your precious time and explain how you can improve your backstroke by avoiding common mistakes. Watch my backstroke tutorial video if you want to learn backstroke from the scratch. I have distinguished backstroke mistakes into three different groups. Kicking mistakes, pulling mistakes, and body positioning errors. Let's start with the kicking mistakes first. Most of the backstroke kicking mistakes make your body sink. The lower your body is in the water, the higher is the drag and the more effort you have to produce in order to stay up. One of the most common mistakes we make while learning the backstroke is forgetting to kick. Should you notice that your lower legs submerge below the surface, be aware that you are not using your legs. Keep kicking and see how your legs can help your entire body to stay closer to the surface. You will be rewarded with a smaller drag and higher swimming efficiency. Initiating your kicks from your knees will cause some problems along the way. To name a few, I would say your legs could be sinking too deep under the water with your hips submerged as well. And in some cases, you can even push the water towards your face with your knees. If you're not excited by the following mistakes, initiate your kicks from your hips and get your entire leg involved. It feels much better having your whole body aligned close to the surface while swimming on your back. The good news is that you're kicking. The bad news is that you're kicking too deep. It wastes a lot of energy and requires lots of effort. Make your kick shorter and observe your lower body coming higher. As a result, you will put less effort and stay closer to the surface. Swimming becomes smoother when you stay higher in the water as this reduces water drag and lowers resistance. Your legs might sink if your muscles are too tight. During the backstroke kick, if your legs are straight, you're locking your muscles and joints which causes your body to sink. Unlock your knee and ankle joints and keep your muscles relaxed. Kicks should be short and steady. Kicking should be effortless yet effective, keeping your body afloat and propelling you forward. Do not try to kick too hard. Spare some energy and don't annoy people with a bunch of splashes your legs make. Keep your kick short and steady while swimming backstroke. Focus on getting your toes and ankles out of the water rather than lifting your entire foot. The lion's share of propulsion in backstroke comes from your pools. Consider your kicks as the means to stabilize your body in the water, providing balance and control. Your toes are pointed upwards and your ankles are overly tense. If that's the case, you're not creating propulsion or even moving backwards. Let's work on loosening them up. You should use the feet to flutter the water up and down to generate the efficient propulsion. Keep your toes extended and ankles relaxed and move the water up and down with every single kick. Allow me to show you a couple drills you can do to improve your backstroke kicking. Start this drill with your legs staying down closer to the surface. Maintain the regular kicking rhythm, emphasizing the effort with the downbeat. See how this kick can help your entire body to climb up in no time. Consider purchasing a pair of fins. Practice backstroke kicking with the fins. Keep your kick short, don't kick too high and don't bring your fins too deep under the water. This drill is designed to enhance the efficiency of your kicks and increase the power in your legs. Check out the backstroke kicking tutorial on my YouTube channel. 
dive deeper into the art of backstroke kicking by clicking the link you see in the upper right corner. Before we explore some common pulling mistakes, let me ask you for a favor. Approximately 6% of my viewers are subscribed to my channel. Please give me a favor and subscribe to my channel. It will help me to deliver more useful content for you and help my channel to grow. When talking about backstroke pulling, we want to focus on efficiency. The stroke done proper way produce lots of propulsion with little effort. If your arm enters the water too far away from your head, you are not getting the full potential from your stroke. Start pulling the water right next to your head. A larger stroke increases efficiency, enabling you to cover more distance with each attempt. Make sure your arm doesn't cross over your face during the recovery phase of the stroke. This pattern throws off your balance, alters the straight path and causes water to splash into your face. Imagine splitting your body into two equal halves, making the perfect symmetry. The left arm shouldn't cross the left side, the right shouldn't cross the right. Now, you have a perfect balance and your face stays dry. If your arm isn't fully extended before entering the water, it's likely that your strokes are short and there is room for improvement. The arm should be straight, entering the water close to your head. This position will allow you to move a lot of the water, creating the best backstroke pulling experience in the world. If you ever wonder why you are losing a straight trajectory and hitting the lane or the wall, you might have to check if you are pulling the water away from your torso. Move your arms alongside your torso and finish your stroke beside your thigh. To move forward, you need to propel the water behind you. Otherwise, your body will drift towards the side. If you feel your body bouncing back and forth as you swim the backstroke, it's likely because you're pushing the water straight down during the strokes, rather than sending the water towards the pool's bottom. Aim to push it behind you, and your stroke by your thighs. By propelling the water backward, your body moves in the opposite direction, leading to a smoother and more efficient backstroke. If you're keeping your arms completely straight under the water during the backstroke, it might be the time to rethink this approach. Keeping your arms straight under the water can tense your muscles and joints, preventing you from maximizing the potential of each stroke. Instead, keep your arms straight only when it's above the water. As your arm enters the water, bend your elbow. This way, when you push the water, you do it with both your palm and forearm completing the stroke close to your thigh. Slowing down your arm just before they enter the water during the backstroke can cause your head to dunk underneath the water. You don't need to move your arms fast to correct this, but it's crucial to maintain a consistent speed as your arms enter the water. Remember, any part of your body that remains above the water can create drag pulling you downwards, so keeping a steady arm movement is key to a balanced and effective backstroke. Common mistake I have observed while teaching the four competitive strokes, including backstroke, is the tendency to cup the palms while pulling through the water. Instead, keep your palm open as you move through the water. This is the most effective and efficient way to propel yourself while swimming the backstroke. Pay attention to the water entrance phase when swimming backstroke next time. If you're entering the water with your thumb going in first, it's time for a change. Rotate your palm so that your pinky enters the water first. This adjustment places you in the ideal position for a perfect stroke, enabling you to move the water using both your palm and forearm effectively. Remember, it's not about how fast you move your arms in the water. It's about how skillfully you're using those strokes to propel 
far out. Consider making these drills to improve your backstroke pulling game. This is my favorite backstroke drill since I love pulling the lane lines, trying to make my life a little easier. Position yourself close to the lane line and as you bring your arm out of the water, reach back and grab the lane line with your finger. Position yourself close to the lane line and as you bring your arm out of the water, reach back and grab the lane line with your fingers. Then bend your elbows and pull the lane line to help propel yourself forward. The key to moving forward is to bend your elbow and actively pull on the lane line with your hand. This drill is excellent for teaching you to bend your elbow effectively. This technique helps you to achieve the ideal backstroke position, allowing you to move water effectively with your hands and forearms rather than relying on your entire arm. Start with your arms by your sides, do 6 kicks, then pull with your left arm. Follow with another 6 kicks, then pull with your right arm. After 6 more kicks, perform a double arm stroke. It's beneficial to keep kicking continuously, especially during the double arm stroke. The 6 kick rhythm creates a pause between strokes, giving you momentum to plan your next move. The majority of mistakes we do in backstroke I would say up to 90% are related to the wrong body position and in the water. So pay attention and take notes. Let's improve your back floating. Any body part staying above the surface will push your body underneath the water. Whether it's your head, shoulders or legs, letting them rise above the water can push the rest of your body down. Keep your body in a straight line and let the water support you. Make sure your ears and the back of your head stay under the water. You'll notice how the water naturally keeps you afloat, making your swim feel effortless. Pay attention to where your chin is the next time you're swimming backstroke. If your chin is too high, you might get water in your nose. On the other hand, if your chin is too low, the back of your head will stick out of the water, causing your body to sink lower. A good guide is to keep the space of about a fist size between your chin and your chest. This way, the oval of your face stays dry and the back of your head remains submerged, ensuring the effortless backstroke. If you find that your head, legs and torso are all at the different levels while swimming backstroke, then you are not swimming correctly. This body position creates drag, pulling your body down and slowing you down in the water. Ideally, your entire body should stay at the same level. Keep your torso, legs and head aligned. Proper alignment allows your body to rise higher and stay closer to the surface, creating less drag. Proper alignment allows your body to rise higher and stay closer to the surface, creating less drag. This makes your swimming faster and easier. If you're not tilting your hips, you're missing out on making longer backstrokes, thus using your arms not to their full potential. Tilt your hips so your shoulders come out of the water and help your arms reach further. This approach will make your strokes longer, which brings more efficiency and distance per stroke. If you forget to breathe while swimming on your back, you are not taking advantage of backstroke, giving you access to all of the air in the world. Make sure you breathe consistently while swimming backstroke. Try to inhale and move in one arm and exhale while using the other. Inhale with your mouth, exhale with your nose or mouth. Practice these simple yet effective drills to find if you have some flows in your floating technique. Practice kicking on your back while keeping your arms down by your sides. Try kicking with your elbows bent and your arms cradling your head. Also, practice kicking with your arms extended behind you. Keep your body aligned, submerged inside the water with only your face staying out dry. And lastly, make sure to incorporate the backstroke into your training routine. Improving your backstroke can also enhance your skills in other swimming strokes. Don't just concentrate on freestyle. Try to learn as many different strokes as possible 
for well-rounded swimming ability. Thank you for watching the video. Help me to beat the algorithm. You know what to do. Like the video, leave the comment and share it with your friends. Watch the following video. Until next time. Bye.